My name is Paulo Costanzo. I have the honor of sitting down with Elias uh, at the Man Cave Chronicles podcast. Uh, check out Upload Season 2. It's on Amazon Prime right now. And also, check out Elias's hair. <laughs> what hair? <laughs> <laughs> Paulo, welcome to the cave. Welcome you. Welcome to the cave. Welcome you. Welcome to your cave. Welcome to your cave. How's that? All right. And what I need <laughs> you to send me your 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 brick backdrop. So I, I can. I, I'll definitely do that. I don't even so, know how to do these video filters. I'm going to try to do one. I don't have literally none. It says none. I don't have the option of doing a video. You gotta you gotta, you gotta spend a few minutes to make them like I do. <laughs> Wow, amazing. Okay, so you found yeah. like an actual man cave and you're like, this is a cave where men live. I'm going to take a picture of the wall. I'm going to put my little name on it and there we go. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, with uh, uh, the listener viewers tune into the audio, they'll have to come to the video and watch this part if they want to watch the video. They can see you as Mateo, season two of Upload. It's got to be a little exciting time for you. It is exciting. Um, I mean, it's a weird time in general, but um, definitely in regards to the, to the, I'm excited to see the show. I mean, yeah, I've seen nothing. I literally have seen nothing except for a one second of me kissing Andy in the, in the trailer. <laughs> so yeah, before we dive into more of the show, you know, I was doing, trying to do some research on you and everything, you know, like, I don't know how old you are. I'm in my forties. I remember you from Joey, you know, so back in the day, how many years ago are we talking about here? The show that shall not be named. Uh, Joey was like, well, yeah, a while, like 15 years ago or something. Wow. It feels like yesterday, though. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah, I'd love to talk about Joey. No one ever wants to talk about it. very weird section of my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, well, first of all, before we even get into that, too, like, I want to know, like, what made you get into acting? What made you fall in love with it? Um, so my mom was, uh, she went to to theater school. Um, to become an actor and she then had me pretty young so that I think that I don't want to say like it derailed her her acting career because I don't know how well it was going but she became a mom but she was always kind of like that she was always you know goofy she introduced me to musical theater when I was very young like seven or eight uh, she sang she sang music she wrote music so she there was just always movies she would bring it she would make me watch good movies Mm. And uh, when I when I uh, got into when I was in grade eight in Canada, we say grade eight, by the way, not eighth grade, which I think is one of the better things we do. You know, I think, I think there's a lot of Canadianisms speech wise that are not great, like like saying drama. We say drama. You say we actually, drama, really? Like, you're being such a drama queen. <laughs> I don't think that's the best. I happily got rid of that, but I'm sticking to grade eight. Um, I had the option of auditioning for this special art school called Mayfield, which we called it Moo Field because it was literally in the, in the midst of cow fields in the middle of nowhere. You wow. had to take a bus to get there. And I was too chicken to audition for drama. Um, I was just too scared. I was a very shy kid, but I did play the trumpet. So a piece of me knew I wanted to be in the arts. So I auditioned playing the French national anthem. Wow. Uh, <laughs> And I got, and I got in, so I was, I got into this special school and I did the first year of music. And I realized one very important thing. I hated the trumpet. That's what I really realized. And I made friends with a couple of kids who were in the drama program. And one day I was, I forget what exactly what it was, but I was talking to one of them. Uh, it was, it was exam time. And we were talking about um i was saying like yeah i had all these stupid scales to do and i had this dumb song i had to do and he's like yeah man we had to like act like a monkey for like an hour like a whole hour. like like a real like really get into character the and i was like that was your exam and he's like yeah and i'm like i can't do this anymore so i gave up my lunch period in grade 10 to to sit in on the drama class the kids thought i was really weird they're like who the fuck is this guy who is this can i say can i swear i just yeah, did. yeah that's fine that's um, fine so I sat there like a creepy kid and the, the teacher like didn't have the heart to tell me no. And so I just every day would eat my lunch as I ran down the hall and I'd sit in the, and watch. And I just was I, and I just was hoping for my moment. And one day this guy, Adrian Reynolds, who, who became my friend, he was out sick. So they're like, well, who's going to play his part? And I was like, 
He's like, well, <laughs> follow it. I'm like, yes. Oh, no, no. I don't need a script. Okay. Law. <laughs> like, just went right into it. <laughs> and then I just became part of their class unofficially. And then oh. finally, the drama guy allowed me to audition. And then I became a drama guy. And then I did musicals. And that's where it all started. Wow. Growing up in Canada, too, is like, I'm surprised you didn't get pushed into hockey. It seems like every actor that from Canada that I have on, they're like, oh, I got forced to play in hockey or give it a try and everything. Just ruined everything. Just ruined uh, everything, right? Two things about that. One, I can't skate. Literally can't skate. I, I don't know why. I can't. I was in an... Anyway, I just did, I didn't skate. I can't skate. But my cousin right now, his name is Joey Costanzo. He was... I don't know the exact thing. He was, he was like the youngest goalie ever drafted to the OHL, but he's killing it in the, on, in the, in the OHL, which is one level beneath the NHL. He's amazing. He's a goalie. And I actually, do, I don't want to jinx it, but he's, he's on a pretty solid path to possibly becoming, you know, I don't wow. want to say it out loud, but yeah, I'm extremely impressed by him and proud of him. Wow. So you, so you pushed the, the whole acting thing and everything. Uh, now, did you end up moving out to LA? What was the, what was the next step after you got, you know, older and acting lessons and everything so yeah I, I went to theater i ended up going to theater school in toronto called ryerson but i was already working i was already doing like shows here and there and things mm -hmm. and then i got a part on a show called animorphs again so it's always ridiculous it's called animorphs they're actually rebooting it right now really? about a whole bunch of kids who can like absorb dna and become animals <laughs> and uh so i dropped out of theater school to do that and then Somehow I did like a cattle call for this DreamWorks movie, which ended up being Road Trip. And then they flew me to New York. That's a great story, which I won't. It's, it's a longer story. But uh, then I, I met Todd Phillips and then I did that movie. Then I moved to L.A. Wow. And that's when that kind of section started. You mentioned Road Trip. That still has a fate, uh, a great following, man. A great cult. Like everybody still talks about that movie so it's, many years later. It's so dated. It's so the movie is about a guy who takes a videotape, a physical videotape, and sends it to his girlfriend across the country, but accidentally sends a sex tape that he made with another girl. Mm -hmm. And so the whole plot of the movie is trying to get across the country to beat the tape, which is in snail mail, <laughs> try to get there to beat the tape. And that's what that movie's about. Um, but yes, people still love that movie. That was a fun three months for sure. It's funny too because you don't even like you don't see those type of movies anymore. What, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, of course not. There, that so many of them were, you know, kind of I don't want to say denigrating women, but definitely, you know, they were made by guys, kind of to yeah. be watched by guys. It was it was the the female characters were not very strong most of the time. Uh, sex comedies, you know, it was about objectification. So no, they don't, that movie would not, no, a lot of those movies would not have a place now at all. Right. I know it's like, it's like but if it's on TV, most people leave it on. I'm one of them. I'm guilty for that. I'm a Tom Green fan. So I, I just like his sections where he's just being yeah. a weirdo. Um, but that movie's not what, you know, there's naked parts and stuff. And I, yeah. again, it was made for guys, kind of for, right. for guys, just like American Pie. Like those movies yeah. were, when I was a teenage boy, like I thought it was like, yeah, it was almost like watching porn or something. Um, but, you know, ultimately, I don't think it was doing, doing great things for the psyche of America, yeah. North America or the world. But yes, thank you. Road Trip was a fun time. And, and, uh, and yeah, I'm glad people still like it. So you, we mentioned uh, earlier in the interview, uh, Joey, you said you want that nobody really asks you about it. How come? Do you like not talk like talking about it or? I mean, it. Uh, most people don't know that there was a spinoff of friends like friend there was a sequel show there was a fraser to the cheers of friends yeah or you know what i mean um it was it's i could write a book on it maybe one day i will i don't know it was it was you know it was destined to fail like you know that have you seen the movie uh, or the show the the dana carvey show like the, yes. the documentary about the day there should be yeah. one of those about joey because from the very beginning, there were elements that were kind of cool, but there were other elements that were like the Friends creators was a trifecta. It was three people. Um, yeah. Kevin Bright ended up being our producers, our producer, and he and Matt decided to go forward with this thing. The other two producers were like, we don't want anything to do with this. And the other friends were like, we don't want to do that. So the so they never showed up to kind of 
bridge the two worlds. You know what mm. I mean? Like Frasier, you had all the people from Cheers coming in and yes. most spinoffs are like that. This one, it was like, what? And it was just confusing. And I was only 24, but I knew something. I knew it was like immediately, I'm like, this is not, there's no way this is going to work. Um, but that being said, if you watch it, there are some parts that are good and some parts that are funny. Um, it just never, it just never works though. It's never, but that said, I think that if you were to release it right now, like if it came out on HBO max today, yeah. I think everybody would watch it partially because they love friends and because Matt is funny on the show. And like, there's all, you know, Jennifer Coolidge is, you know, there's lots of in talented people on it. Uh, but also for the car crash element of like, whoa, like, yikes, because <laughs> there's cringy shit that happens, you know, yeah. where you're just like, oh, that's why they didn't let the last four or five episodes air. Oh, wow. They just like canned, canned it. Um, but I think it's a, I think it's a fascinating kind of whole thing that hopefully one day will be, you know, allowed. But it's, it's still nice watch. though, but like, cause you're still, you're cemented in that world. Also part of the friends world, but in the spinoff world. I am cemented. I still am Michael Tribbiani right now. You're right. right. I still am forever. <laughs> it's funny. Adam Goldberg, who uh, I just got on Instagram. I, I resisted for a long time, but I got it because I wanted to promote this show. And I don't know. It was. I guess it was just time. But Ed, Adam Goldberg has a great Instagram page. Uh, and he, he played my father on that show. Yeah. He's eight years older than me. And <laughs> I, I someone sent me a clip of the show and I was like oh my god he's it's ridiculous that he that he plays my father but somehow it works anyway moving right along so after that how many years was it before you uh booked uh royal pains because that you that lasted a while that show everybody um, remembers you from that one yeah that was uh, like three or four years later or something three or three or four years later then i yeah then i got that show mm. and that show became like um, a very um, important part of my life. Like my, you know, most of my thirties were spent on that show. And that show was just like a magical, wonderful experience. Like quite the opposite experience of Joey. Like it was just like a warm, loving, very, everyone kind of knew exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. It was doing like, well, it wasn't like a huge hit or anything, you know, it was like, but people who watched people it- watched really it on good. USA. Yeah. yeah, and we really kind of created a family. It's such a cliche, but everyone says that. Um, but, you know, Mark and I, I talked to Mark today, Mark Forstein, still one of my closest friends. Um, and um, yeah, that was, that was, that's a, that was a great, great experience. Yeah. So now you've done, you've done a little comedy. You've done like, you know, Royal Pains was comedy slash, you know, like, I don't know, like not a drama, but then you've also designated Survivor, which is a drama. What's your favorite, like, thing to tackle the most? out of those type of projects um probably just things that have all the things like you know uh, you know i I've, I've written something recently that i'm hopefully going to be shooting in the fall that um is a straight drama actually it's it surprised myself by writing that but um i kind of like all of it you mm -hmm. know i do like being able to be funny that's kind of important for long term for yeah. you know if i was going to be on a show I, I would i would like there to be some elements of levity and comedy um but you know it's always nice to have a role where you can dip it into both mm. well uploads kind of like that it's got the little comedy but it also has the little drama right in there too with everything that's going on uploads a very weird show and i asked them when i first got there because i was kind of like i don't know how to do this at all <laughs> and greg basically just said like yes this show has like seven tones yeah. it's a comedy it's a drama it's a sci-fi it's a noir it's like it's all the things um so i kind of i found myself having to really kind of analyze some of the scenes and be like all right which which world am i in in this scene because i because mm. i was i really didn't understand it and he was like don't worry all of us are all of us are like that we're all kind of just being fluid with it um yeah that's not, so how did you get approached uh for upload let's talk, let's get into that I auditioned for it. Wow. It was just a, a it was just a straight up audition, Zoom, I assume, live or self -tape? No, I sent in a tape. Okay. I wow. sent in a tape and uh, that was it. They they were like, yeah, well, there, yeah, you're you're cool. You're Mateo, come on in. Um, yeah, Dee Reese, who is the director, I think she was 
I mean, I'm, I guess they all felt that they liked me for it, but she, she told me later, she's like, I, I really advocated for you for this part, which was, which felt really nice because she's an extremely talented. And, wow. Now, did you watch the show uh, before you even auditioned for this? Were you a fan of the show or did you, as soon as you booked it, you went back and watched the first season? Exactly. That's exactly what happened. I went and yeah. watched it. And then I was yeah. like, man, this is pretty cool. This is like, definitely, this is, yeah. you know, not, so, yeah. What did you, what did you think of it? Like the way it was left off on season one? Um, it's interesting. I'm just trying to think of the order in which I watched it and read the scripts for the thing. Um, I was looking forward to, well, I was, you know, I was looking forward to seeing what my part would be like. Um, yeah, I thought it was cool. Um, and I was, and I was, I was like, oh, this is, this is going to be interesting because whatever I'm going to be playing is going to be outside of the world we've seen already. Mm. Um, which I think excited me. Um, and then I got the script, you know, cause I auditioned with some dummy sides, um, w you know, which were kind of gave the idea of the character. And then I, I got there and I was like, wow, this is, this, this is so, so strange to enter into a, you've seen it. I can talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We have so, so the first four days were that were the Lud camp stuff, okay. which for those of you who have seen it, uh, you know, it's a, it's like a camp of, they're called the Luds, which is kind of short for Luddites, which means people who don't like technology, um, living off the grid, um, kind of in rebellion of all of the technology that has taken over the, most of the world, you know, like growing their own shit and eating their own foods and, and, and you know, everyone looks kind of dirty yeah. all the time. Um, so I got there and uh, it was raining. Vancouver was, it, it rains, it just rains and it was cold and it, it was like the, you know, probably the worst time of year there, which was January Oh, wow. because it doesn't free i like snow a lot i'm from canada go blue jays but i don't i can't stand 36 degree rain and that's kind of what it was for the whole time oh. so the first four days those first so when you see me and andy meeting and all those luds and like you know there's some nighttime scenes there's scenes where she and i are kind of in the like sitting when we're kind of starting to like not fall in love but like starting to vibe on each other or whatever yeah um it was so cold and it was so muddy and the whole crew was just suffering. And I remember telling Andy, I was like, we were, we were wearing heating devices under our clothes because every time the coats came off, it was just a matter of time before we started shaking and you couldn't have that on camera. So I just remember telling Andy, I'm like, you know, is it weird that I'm kind of, that I'm liking this? I'm, I like that this is hard. I don't, I, 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 you know, we're in a LUD camp. Like I like that, that we're all suffering through this together. Like, this is the kind of stuff that's, that's that makes shoots memorable because mm. I've been on a million sets and like you shoot scenes and you go home and whatever. But we were like, I remember a lot of that. It was like sliding down a hill if you weren't careful. And, you know, um, and she was like, yeah, that's weird. This fucking sucks. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> like you're alone on that one. Uh, but that was my introduction to the show is shooting those really cool scenes um, in the LUD camp. So you mentioned the camp, you know, everybody hits technology, but, you know, throughout the season, we see you like you're very good with technology and the things that you do. Well, that's the thing. My character, Mateo, like he he's no. Yeah, he's not like he's a stranger to it. Mm. He just he just he knows his enemy. You know, he just he doesn't he just doesn't believe in it. But he obviously knows a lot about it. He's he's and he's kind of like a terrorist, really, like, you know, and he's done his homework. He's a smart, educated terrorist in a sense who has to who you know who who's who knows exactly how to uh hamstring this larger machine and hopefully yeah. take it down which, which is weird because you know like throughout the episodes you know like me and my wife are watching it we keep saying i kept saying you're a bad guy you're a bad guy you're about to do something obviously we don't see anything like that on the second season but you were giving out that vibe throughout the season well what did you what did you think because like after on day three, Andy was sitting with me. We were doing the kissing scene or the dance. We're something dance. We're dancing. That's the scene, right? That was that made it in, right? When we're dancing, there's some music and we're outside and we're kind yes, of yes. Anyway, we're doing that. She just looked at me. She's like, "The audience is gonna fucking hate you." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess <laughs> I was too. I was too busy thinking about what I was doing." And I was like, "Yeah, that's probably right. They probably like. Did you hate me because?" 
because I stood in the way of of her and and Nathan's thing. No, I mean I like the I mean no because you were coming off as like I like villains to be you know to on shows. So I was kind of hoping this is you were going to be like a big twist at the end, but obviously we didn't get that with your character. But who knows? So, Season three is being written. We don't know. But did you hate me? No. You can be honest. No, I did not hate your character. Say you hate me. Just say I hate you. I hate oh, your character. Yes. yes. <laughs> Harder. Harder. I hate uh, your character, god damn it. Oh god, yes. <laughs> um well I'm look, I'm glad that but but yeah. I, the having seen the first season, I felt the second season was definitely ratcheted things up and made it pretty exciting you know a lot happens like yeah. keeps going and going and building and building and you know hopefully god willing there's going to be a, a third season right. uh seems like there will be um and we'll get to see what happens at the end of that you know that big cliffhanger right so uh, so you know we mentioned that you know you have a lot of scenes with andy like how, so how would you like describe that chemistry and working with her yeah we we had a lot together um you know, she had so much to do. She's the star of the show. You know, a lot of people, I mean, both of them are, I guess, but she's the protagonist of the show. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It was hard to judge at first because both of, she, both of us were so cold that they set up heaters in the tents and we couldn't share one. So it's mm. like we were, she had to be in her heater and I had to be on mine. But uh, ultimately there was a moment that um, Josh Banday, who plays Ivan. Yeah. Uh, he and I became really close because we had a lot of time offset to go on walks and stuff. It was COVID time, but we, we, we like went on walks in the, mm. in the forest when we weren't working, we got to know each other. And like, I know Andy, I knew Andy somewhat, but we hadn't like really hung out. But on set one day, I was just like, I want to dance. And they were like, what? I'm like, I just want to dance like right now. And they were like, okay like what do you i'm like what if we choreographed a dance and just danced it and just took a video of it or something and they were like all right but then they got behind it and then all three of us really got behind it and uh we 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 ended up choreographing this short video which i'm going to release on my instagram when the show comes out i guess now you'll be able to see it so if you go to my instagram you can see this dance but we did two iterations one without music when we were in costume and then a longer better version uh with music when we were by the trailers and uh that was fun that was fun i wish i got to hang out with the cast more it was we were during it was covid man like COVID, we, yeah. in normal times the whole cast would have been staying in one place like the sutton place like i like always happens when you were shooting a movie in vancouver usually that's what happened mm. with joe's pussy cats and 40 days and 40 like so many so many times the whole cast will be there and then you get to go to the bar and hang out every day and like you get to know them uh, in this case, it was like, hi, masks sit in a tent. Like it was very, that was, that was tough. Um, so if we go back for third season, I cannot, I just hope to gosh, A, that it goes back and B, that I'm in it and C, that, um, that the, ma the mandates are lowered so mm -hmm. that we can like actually have a more human uh, experience because uh, it was, you know, it, was, it wasn't like that this time. Yeah. Now, I'm trying to remember, I know you, you mentioned Josh. There's a scene, episode five or six, I'm not sure, where you guys are in his apartment and he's got that vacuum with the underwear on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, was it, it, was it, didn't that vacuum start humping you at one point in the scene and he gets mad? Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, mon chérie. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's hilarious. So that's a, that's a good, funny moment. So the director of that episode had a had a stick, two sticks, which controlled the Roomba with the thong on it. Yeah. And so she would, and then they would remove them in post. So she, on the, the time that it was humping my leg, she was like, okay, roll camera, roll camera. I forget where she's from, but she, she had an accident. Roll camera, here we go. Okay, go. And she was just like going at it with my leg, like <laughs> with my leg. And I, and I had to like pretend to be getting fucked by a Roomba like I was like really you know had it I was going with it and then it kept going and she kept going and and it just seemed like she was going to say cut but she didn't and I remember at one point I was like I was still and I, and I just looked around and the entire crew was looking at each other going <laughs> she just really had it in her mind of a specific way for the Roomba to really make it with my leg uh and it took her it, it was like 
it was like a five to seven minute wow. <laughs> take, but yeah. I've directed before. I know what it's like to have something in your head and want to get it exactly right. So I hope she, <laughs> I hope she got it. I hope she got it right. So Mateo, if you could do a spinoff of Mateo, what would you want to see? Um, 50 shades of blood. Why is that? Um, I just was kidding. I feel like <laughs> Teo, that's a really funny question. Cause he's kind of a mystery to me. I don't know what that, I, I, I still don't fully understand what his motivations are for some of it, because when you're doing TV, they don't give you all the scripts. Right. So, you know, I may find out that I am the bad guy next season. I have no clue. Yeah. Um, but, um, I don't know. I think he's kind of funny, a kind of likable asshole. You tell me. Oh yeah, but there's a scene near the end where they ask for your help, and you're like, "I'm not helping you." And they're like, "All right, all right." You like kind of gave in on it. Yeah, I think you're supposed to kind of hate him, but also be like, "I don't want to like him," but he's kind yeah. of kind of miss him when he's not there, and I guess it's kind of, you know, I would not want to see a spinoff of this character. <laughs> there's not. A, I don't know. There's not a move. So I. Uh, um so yeah, like i mentioned this interview will get released uh after the show uh airs uh, now what's next for you now like you said you have you've wrote something and you want to hopefully get it made but any other projects you got coming up um uh, no i have the thing that i've written that i can't say too much about um um I w i'll be doing it though with reed bernie who is like one of my favorite actors he's uh he'll be playing my father uh, it looks like Jay Smith Cameron will be in it as well. Um, Katie Holmes will be in it. Um, I say all this kind of haltingly because I just can't. I'm so I'm so grateful that they're all interested in doing this with me. Um, we're just trying to find financing right now, but it's a uh, uh, so that's going to be pretty amazing. Uh, other than that, no, I'm just uh, you know upload. You know, I think it's going to come back. I think I will be back uh, in June or something um but other than that i'm just focusing on this and uh and another project that i may be making after that as well yeah yeah i, I could definitely see you back for season three because the way it was left off on episode seven there's like there's still so much tied into your character also i think it's a good character for the show i think and i'm not just saying that because i am that character it, it's just it's nice to have a someone in trying to get in between yeah. them all the time yeah you know that's awesome Paulo, uh, lastly, uh, how can the listeners and viewers find you on social media? We heard you, know, you mentioned earlier you just joined Instagram. I just joined Instagram. So if you want, you can find me. It's Paulo underscore Costanzo. Um, and it's, yeah, there's not a whole lot on there yet, but there will be more. And like I said, you can, you, you'll find those dance videos uh, and a couple of other behind the scenes things about upload as well. Paulo, this was, uh, this was great. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> you.